Mode zero right now. Bam. Mode one. Bam. Mode two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. And boys and girls, eleven. Full retard. Don't go full retard. Hey guys, uh, my name is Paul. I'm the uh, engine management tuner and uh, owner of Yemi Sport Tuning. Uh, we're working with the Jaeger Racing Time Attack uh, Subaru today. And we're basically have made some changes to the boost control system in the car. We'd previously been running a Mac four port solenoid. We since switched to a really nice external wastegate setup based around some Turbo Smart wastegates. And running the four port setup on there resulted in a tremendous amount of granularity just because you've got on a four port setup, your air pressure is going literally alternating between the top and bottom ports of the gates. And it really made the boost oscillate. Our friends at AEM uh, have gotten us a really, one of their great three port solenoids, which we've plumbed up. And uh, we've also added a mode switch because uh, while we're doing boost control, well, why don't we just have the ability to make on the fly boost control changes. Now in a car such as ours here, which is an all wheel drive vehicle being used in time attack, traction is really not an issue. So we're not using it so much to account for different traction conditions and go up and down in power for that. But really more for us, it's going to be a matter of some longevity on the motor and really be able to decide the power level that we feel is appropriate for the conditions on the track. And then also just even the situation that we present ourselves. Obviously we don't have to give it all the boost, but now we have maps that go basically from around 500 wheel horsepower to just short of 800 wheel horsepower. And it's completely at his fingertips. Some of how boost control on the Infinity works uh, when we're using the mode switch. And basically it takes two tables, a boost uh, base duty one and base duty two tables, and it adds them together. So what we went ahead and did is that I figured for us, you know, a mode of number three or four, somewhere in the middle is where we would typically run the car for a practice session, which is the way the car will turn, you know, most of its laps for a setup, shakedown, that sort of thing like that. So I can go to mode one, and you can see that it clicks up right there, and two, and three, and four. Basically what it does here is that you can see when we're in our modes that are below number three is I have it actually reducing wastegate duty cycle. And then also our boost targets become lower as well too. You can see there's a minus number here. And then as we go to the higher modes, we're adding duty cycle uh, progressively, much more so at higher RPM as our back pressure ratios are getting higher and we need just more to slam that wastegate shut to hold our boost levels. So that system all works very really flawlessly. The solenoid itself and the actual built-in boost control in Infinity is really excellent. The solenoid, um, it's one of the industry standards um, in terms of the way that it works and the... Uh, uh, the way that it's built, uh, but certainly one of the most robust type of solenoids available in the market, extremely durable, uh, which is great obviously for a motorsport application. And last thing I wanted to talk about too was just uh, the boost control system that's built into AIM Infinity and how well it works. Basically, there are commanded base duty cycles that we set up, and obviously the closer that you're inherently to what the car actually requires in terms of base duty cycles to hit the, your target boost levels, depending on what your you know, your axis are commanding. In, us, in our case, we're trying to make sure that the car is as progressive as uh, possible coming in and out of power, um, and also that we're able to modulate power going through corners. So we have our boost target set up by throttle position and RPM. Generally speaking on some other systems that don't work quite as well, you have to be dead nuts on the money or really, really close uh, with your base duty cycles to avoid overshooting, undershooting, and just oscillating around your boost target. Uh, both the AEM system and the AEM solenoid, everything's really quick responding really intuitive and easy to tune in to the point where, you know, I could be off a little bit and inherently when you're trying to tune, in essence, 10 different boost levels, you know, you don't really want to have to go through each one and be down to 1% correct. I mean, that'd be ideal, but ain't nobody got time for that. System does work great, uh, didn't require a heck of a lot of intervention or, you know, exhaustive tuning in that respect and really allowed us to dial in the multi-boost levels really quickly and easily. And that's pretty much going to be our little overview and uh, just our day of implementation of some of these new additions to the Jaeger Racing uh, Time Attack Subaru. Thank you for watching. This is Paul from Yummy Sports Channel.